hello everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm Karen Dubbs, FlexibleWarrior.com. Uh, whether you're joining me live or joining me later, make sure you carve out this next little while, try to block out distraction the best you can and just really make this next half hour or so um, all about you and restoring your mind, body, and warrior spirit. So I was planning on being outside today, but it is officially cold November rain. <laughs> and so we're gonna do a little fireside core and stretch. As always, make sure you honor, protect, and listen to your body. You do you, I'll do me, modify as you need to. And um, at the end, afterwards, we're gonna do a little smoothie demo too. So today starts the um, seven day healthy life challenge. If you are in my challenge group on my Facebook Chill Power Challenge group, you got this handout. Or if you subscribe to my e-newsletter, you also got the handout. Um, so we're gonna go through a little bit of that and how to sort of detox from stress and sugar. Because for whatever reason, from Halloween to New Year's Day is all about sugar. And unfortunately, even though it's a joyful season, it can be a little stressful too. So hopefully right now, we're gonna take these next seven days to really carve out time to practice self-care, boost our immune system and our mood, and detox from sugar and stress. So we'll talk a little bit more about that after class, but for now, go ahead and come to your yoga mat. And, um, and I will kick off my slippers. It's officially snuggly slipper season as of today. Um, again, we're gonna be working on core today and flexibility. So one of my favorite combos, it'll be about a half an hour. All right, so coming to your mat, we're gonna start sitting up this time. So feet are flat onto your mat. Your knees are pulling together. So I want you to squeeze your knees together the best you can. Hands underneath your thighs, sit up really tall. So when you sit up tall, you should feel the crown of your head lifting to the sky and the tailbone straight underneath you on the floor. Pull your shoulder blades back and down so you feel almost as if you're rowing, like on a rowing machine, contracting your upper middle back. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, you're gonna tuck right behind your tailbone and slide down until your low back touches your mat. You can reach for your fingertips if you like. Um, if you need to, your hands can hold underneath your thighs to pull you back up. So if you don't need to hold on, don't worry about that, but you have that option if you need it. Big breath in, sit up really tall. Exhale, tuck behind the tailbone, roll halfway down. Again, reaching through the fingertips or holding underneath the thighs. And let's hold for a breath or two here. Flatten the abdominal wall. Again, squeeze those knees together the best you can. Hold on if you need to, otherwise just lifting through your fingertips. Take those hands underneath your thighs, row back, strengthen the upper middle back, and then tucking behind the tailbone, roll halfway down one more time. Hold here, you might feel a little quiver. Squeeze those knees together, flatten the abdominal wall, and then lifting all the way back up. Try not to use the hands if you can help it. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, balancing a little bit. So bring your balance right behind your tailbone. Lengthen through your toes again, row those shoulders back and down, take a big breath in, and then maintaining your balance the best you can. Tuck your tailbone, try not to go with momentum, nice control. Lower down, your upper back still up from the floor. Again, you can hold underneath your thighs if you want to. Otherwise, if you can, rock back up and try to catch your balance without using your hands. Sit up really tall, hold under the thighs, pull those shoulders back and down if you need to have your feet on the floor if you can. Otherwise, balance. Tuck behind the tailbone. We're gonna do two more, nice and slow. Roll, 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 roll. Catch your balance. And as you roll back up, try not to use momentum. So using that control, it takes a little practice. If you want to, you can straighten your legs, get a little hamstring stretch, point the toes. Again, still opening the heart, shoulders back and down, big breath in. And exhale, bend the knees again if you did have them straight. Tuck behind the tailbone rolling all the way down onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest, good job. Takes a little practice, but it's fun to work on things like that. So rock from side to side. The next thing we're gonna do is toe taps. So you can have your hands right down beside you, um, nose pointed up to the ceiling once you see what we're doing. And then the shins are parallel to the floor, the abdominal wall is flattening. So try to keep the belly pulling in and the low back pressing down. You're gonna tap your toes to the mat and inhale and exhale, lift back up. So inhale as you lower and tap, and exhale as you lift. So depending on how your back is feeling, you can stick with this variation. Okay, a bent knee toe tap. 
if you want to do a little bit more, you want to feel it a little bit more, and you'll get a little bit more of a hamstring stretch as well, you can do straight legs. So you're going to inhale as you lower down, exhale as you lift straight back up. So let's try to do 10 all together and really try to straighten your legs. Again, bent knees or straight legs, not going with momentum, going your fullest range of motion. The inhale lowers you, the exhale lifts you, and we do have about like five or six more. So do the best you can here. Again, if you need to rest or if you need to backtrack and go back to that bent knee version, totally fine. All good. How about a couple more? Let's do three more actually. And breathing in as you lower down, really lengthen out those legs, point those toes, long legs. One more time, inhale, lengthen and lower. Exhale up and lift. Awesome job, you guys. Pull your knees into your chest. You can rock from right to left. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is a single leg bridge pose and then a pigeon. So we wanna work in some of those stretches. So, um, Start with your feet flat on the mat, and they want to be about hip bone distance apart. So just feel where your hips are and line your hips up with your heels. Your fingertips are going to reach to your heels. You're going to take a big breath in. And as you exhale, you're going to press your hips up to the ceiling for bridge pose. Now remember, your glutes are part of your core, right? So everything that's not your limbs, basically, your arms and your legs are part of your core. Again, once you see what we're doing, point your nose straight up to the ceiling so your neck is in line with your um, thoracic spine, transfer your weight to your right foot, pull your left knee to your chest, and then extend that left leg straight up. Now, if your hamstring's feeling tight, you might not have that leg all the way straight, totally fine. A bend in the knees, totally fine, you guys know that. But really push through that right foot and lengthen up through your left toes. Take a big breath in, and then you're gonna cross your left ankle over your right knee and externally left, rotate that left knee out to the side. And then drop your tailbone back down and pick your right foot up and take your hands underneath your right thigh for your reclined pigeon stretch. So as I promised, we are working in some stretching with your core stabilization today. So it's one of my favorite combos. Flex both feet if you can, and then just hug in a little bit deeper if you want a little bit of a deeper stretch. Stay here a little longer. If you need more hip stretches, just stay here longer. You can skip the ab part, but otherwise let's integrate a little ab work with our pigeon. So now you're using the strength of your right thigh to push up into your left ankle, right? And you're feeling that stretch in your left hip. Yes, I am. Dropping down, drop your right heel to the mat, take an inhale. And as you exhale, you're gonna pivot off of your left elbow and bring your right shoulder towards your left hip, okay? So you're gonna inhale, tap your right heel down, exhale over and twist. Try to really take your time with this. So slow down, it is the one time that I do not want you to be in a hurry for sure. So everything is so rushed right now. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Lots to do in every given day. But we really wanna slow down and mindfully move. Maybe even close your eyes and block out distraction. And I hear my Bruno here, my little foster dog, my big foster dog actually is snoring. So if that doesn't send a relaxing message to the mind, I don't know what will. One more time, take it down and then cross it over and across. Now this time I want you to hold it here for three, both heels flexed or toes flexed, two, really feel that contraction through the obliques on the left side, and then lower down. Awesome, okay, so hopefully you felt that on the left side, I know I did. Now I want you to just slide your, your left knee over your right knee as if you're sitting in a chair with crossed legs. The arms are gonna go out into a wide T position, and you're gonna just drop both knees over to your left so that your left knee is crossed on top of your right and you're probably going to feel a stretch through the right piriformis, the right side of your hip, and maybe a little bit into the obliques. Now if that's too much of a stretch for you, you can just uncross your legs and stack your knees on top of each other. But if it's not too much of a stretch, just really let that left leg be heavy on the right leg, get that nice stretch through the low back into your hip. Take a very deep breath in. I think that stretch feels so good. As you exhale, drop tension, relax your shoulders, let any stress melt away. Awesome job. Bring it up to center, keep those legs still crossed, and then just take it in the opposite direction. So you're dropping both knees over to your right now. If you want to, you can take your right hand and put it on top of your left knee and just give it a gentle press to take the stretch a little bit deeper. Again, feels so good for me right here through the glute, attaching into the low back. 
but wherever you're feeling it, we're all put together a little bit differently, so it's all good. Take a big breath in, and then bring it back to center. Let's get that bridge pose on the other side. So both feet are gonna come flat, again, about hip bone distance apart, fingertips reach to heels. Big breath into the nose, nose pointed up to the ceiling. Press your feet into the mat, lift your hips up towards the ceiling, engage the glutes, stretch out the hip flexors and the quads. The more you lift the hips up, keep the belly pulling in and the, the thighs squeezing towards each other. So just be aware if you were rolling to the pinky toe side of the foot, roll to the big toe side of your foot. So it's almost as if you're squeezing in. Now transfer the weight to your left foot, pull your right knee in and extend your right leg straight up. Now really push through that left foot and reach through your right toes. Look up right to your right toes. Take a big breath in, press through your triceps and the backs of the arms as well. And then fold the right ankle over the left knee, externally rotating the right knee out to the side, and then release all the way down. Good, let's get that pigeon stretch. So left foot up from the floor, head, neck, and shoulders come, come up, hands underneath the left thigh, reclined pigeon. For those of you who are my runners in the group, this should feel so good for you. So both feet flexed, use the strength of your left thigh to push up into your right ankle. And again, you are welcome. If, you, if you've been running a lot and you just wanna stay here in this reclined pigeon and opt out of the ab work, all good. Again, you do you, I'll do me. I'll do me. Um, but if you wanna move on and do the ab work, let's go ahead and move to that. So hands come out behind the head, thumbs right along the nape of the neck. Use the strength of the left thigh to push into your right ankle and then lift the head, neck and shoulders up, bringing the left shoulder to the right knee. Inhale, tap the left heel down. And exhale, rotate. Again, we're slowing down. Slow motion with this stuff. You get more out of it, the slower that you go. Don't you feel like that in life sometimes too? You get more out of it when you slow down. When we're in a hurry, it just takes away from the joy of things. But it also, as far as fitness is concerned, you don't get to activate the muscle fibers as much. So nice and slow gets more out of it. Let's do three more. Breathing in as you lower down, exhale over and across and hold. And one more time, inhale, tap. And over and across. Now this time we're holding at the top. Really draw the left shoulder towards the right knee. Let your head rest into your hands. And release it down. I wish you could hear Bruno snoring, it's so great. <laughs> okay, left foot drops to the mat. Your right knee crosses over your left knee as if you're sitting in a chair with crossed legs which by the way, you don't wanna do a whole lot because it does restrict circulation when you're sitting, but for now it's all good. So hands out into a T position. Let's drop the knees over to the right and get that nice stretch through, again, the piriformis into the glutes and maybe into the low back. Again, if this feels like it's too much for your back or for your hip, you can just uncross your legs and do a regular recline twist. Otherwise, right knee is out over the left leg and the right leg, the more that you let that right leg relax and be heavy on the left leg, the more you'll feel the stretch. Wherever you are, take a big breath in. Try to relax on your exhale, letting go of stress and tension with the out breath. And as you inhale, you're gonna roll up to center. Keep that right knee over the left and just cross the midline of the body to the other side. This time, if you wanna take the left hand on top of the right knee and just give it a gentle press, you're welcome to do that. Make sure you're really relaxing your right shoulder and softening your right elbow as well. Take one more big breath in, and then exhale, bring it all the way up to center. Uncross your legs and just hug your knees into your chest. We're gonna do reclined butterfly next. So I just want you to grab onto your feet, bring the bottoms of your feet together to touch so the knees are outside. I'll just turn to this way so you can see a little bit better. So the knees are out, there you go. The knees are out and the bottoms of the feet are touching. This is reclined butterfly. And then from here, if you want to, give it a try. The legs are gonna go straight up to the ceiling. And again, you might feel a hamstring stretch when you do that. And then legs out into a wide straddle position and start to flex the feet if you can. And then just rock a little bit from right to left. Such a great groin inner thigh and medial hamstring stretch. So from here, let's add a little bit more ab work. So hands can come out behind the head. And again, if you wanna skip the abs, that's totally fine. You're not gonna offend me, honor your body. Um, lift it up and lower it back down. Now, if you can, release your hands from behind your head and just reach up and through, reaching through your fingertips. So you inhale lower, exhale 
up and lift. Keep flexing the feet, activating and using the abs to draw your head, neck, and shoulders as far up from the floor as you can. Let's do three more. Three, up, 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 and reach. Last two. Really reach through those fingertips. Last one, best one, fullest range of motion. Lift, 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 and lower down. Beautiful. Hug your knees into your chest and rock from right to left. I think I lost my headbands here. <laughs> All good. Rock from right to left, release your low back. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is kind of come back from where we started, which is that boat pose, that balance position. So the hands underneath your thighs, Try not to use momentum as you draw yourself back up to balance. Try not to touch the toes. If you touch the toes, it's all good. You're going to get another chance. Straighten the legs if you can. Open up through the chest and heart. Get that hamstring stretch and work on your core at the same time. Again, if your legs are straight, bend your knees. Roll down with control. Lots of control. You don't have to use your hands. Inhale. Exhale. Rock it back up. Try to catch your balance without touching your toes. Lengthen your legs. Lift your heart. Focus right up beyond your toes. Take a big breath. And one more time. Bend your knees. Lower down. Very deep breath in. As much control and no momentum. Rock it up. Lengthen. Open. Reach. Breathe. And release down. Awesome job, you guys. A little side stretch here, and then we're going to do a little planking. So come to a seated position. Take your right arm. Lift it straight up and then stretch over to the side, just getting that nice stretch through the obliques and the side waist. If you can bring your forearm down to the mat, go ahead and do that without lifting this hip up. So I don't want you to bring the forearm down to the mat if the hip pops up, in other words, so just work into that direction. Take a big breath in, and let's switch sides. So take it up and over, it should feel so good. Such a simple stretch. So if you were watching football, like I will be today, get on the floor, do some of these stretches, and enjoy your football game and cheer on your team at the same time. That is a win-win. <laughs> Go ahead and lift all the way back up. Okay, so if you wanna hop through, you can, and otherwise you're gonna just make your way to plank, and I'll show you to hop through. It's an option, but you cross your ankles, plant your palms, and hop through. You don't have to do that, but it's kind of fun when you do. Take a big breath in, make sure that your hands are shoulder width, belly is in and up, core is strong, then vinyasa, elbows bend. You can come halfway down or all the way to your belly. Inhale into your cobra or upward facing dog with a big breath in. And then exhale into downward facing dog as you push back. Now the next thing we're gonna do is a side tree pose. Great for, it's just a variation of side plank really. So shift your weight forward. What I need you to do is bring your big toes together to touch first. So just walk your toes together to touch. You're gonna to pivot into your right hand and pivot to the side for your side plank. Lots of variations for your side plank, so if you wanna make it a little easier, bring that foot out in front of you here. Make sure you're lifting your hips just to challenge yourself a little bit more for your core. See if you can take your foot and put it right on top of your calf. Take a big breath in. You can take your top hand and reach it out over your head. Lengthen, open, beautiful core strength. Breathing, breathing, breathing and then square off to your mat. Okay, option to do a vinyasa here if you want to. Bend your elbows lower down. Inhale into your cobra. Back bend or upward facing. Big breath. And downward facing dog as you exhale. Get that good stretch of the calves and the ankles. Awesome. And let's get that side tree on the other side. So, Forgive me in advance, I'm gonna be turning my back to you. Make sure you walk your toes together to touch and the hands are right underneath the shoulders. Pivot to the side. And again, you can take that top foot and bring it out in front if you want, or you can take that top foot and bring it onto your calf to practice that side tree. Whatever you wanna do, practice honoring and listening to your body. One more breath, and then square off to your mat. One more time, vinyasa, elbows bend, lower down. We're getting a little arm strength here as a bonus, right? Exhale, let's take three breaths in downward dog. So inhaling and exhaling through the nose, dropping the heels, spreading the fingertips out wide, and deepening your breath in and out through your nose. <sighs> Good. 
Hands and knees are gonna come down to your mat. And the next thing we're gonna do is a spinal balance. Okay, how are you guys doing? Hang in there with me. We have just about 10 minutes to go. All right, so hands under shoulders, knees under hips, spinal balance is next. So you're gonna kick your right leg straight back and draw your left hand straight forward, okay? Belly's pulled in and up. Let me pivot to the side so you can see what's coming next. And then you're gonna tuck your elbow to your knee, round to your spine, bring your chin to your chest. Inhale, reach it forward and back again. And then as you exhale, I want you to reach your left hand back and just touch your right foot. If you can find it in a space, just touch it. Inhale, reach forward and back again. Exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, spinal balance, forward and back. Exhale, just see if you can find and touch your foot, just for practice. One more time, some of you know what's coming. Inhale, reach forward and back. Exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, forward and back. And this time, yes, go ahead and find your foot. And if you can grab onto it, grab onto it. Kick it up to the sky so you get that nice stretch through the quad and hip flexor on the right leg. And you're getting that nice chest opener on the left shoulder. Kick your toes up to the sky. Take a deep breath in. Of course, we're working on core and a little balance here too. One more breath and release it down. Now from here, we're gonna step that right foot up and through the hands for our favorite runner's lunge. You're gonna take a deep breath in and then pull backwards, straightening the right leg as much as possible. So if the hamstrings are tight, you can keep a bend in this knee, totally fine. The more you can straighten the leg, lift up with the tailbone and open with the collarbone. So I want you to imagine, just like when we did at the beginning with the boat pose, you're pulling your shoulders back and together, opening the chest, and then if you can, soften the elbows and bring the nose in the direction of your right knee. Breathing in and out through the nose sends a very calming message to the central nervous system, which is great for reducing stress. So take an opportunity right now to take a very deep breath. And as you exhale, consciously send that message of peace and calm to your central nervous system. Go ahead and shift your weight forward. Good job, you guys, that felt so good. You're gonna curl your left toes under, squeeze your left leg straight. Do the best you can to not drag your right foot on the floor. Pick it straight up and send it straight up to the sky in a three-legged dog. Now, if you want to, you can bend that knee and kick your hip open. And then bring your right knee to your right wrist for pigeon stretch. All right, so this is a, the stretch that we did earlier in a recline position, now we're doing it here. So you're gonna stretch your right hip, point your left toe, slide your left foot as far back and away from as you can, lift and open your chest, take a huge breath, and then release down to your forearms. So I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and see if you can hear Bruno snoring. You hear it? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Is it relaxing for you? Sometimes snoring isn't very relaxing, but sometimes from a dog, it's just so adorable and relaxing for me. All right, so deep breaths, just like Bruno is. Relax into your stretch. Really get that nice stretch through your right hip. Now, if you want to add a variation for this, I'm going to give you the option to add a king pigeon by bending up the left knee reaching around with your right hand and grabbing the top of your left foot with your right hand. So if that's too much of a stretch or it causes you to cramp up in any way, then obviously back out of it and just stick with your pigeon. Okay? So wherever you are, take one more breath. Curl your left toes under, squeeze your left knee straight, and then lift up and come into forearm plank. So leveling your hips in line with your shoulders. Take three breaths in your forearm plank, squeezing to the midline, back of the neck long, belly pulling in and up. Release your knees, release your belly, come into your back bend, so cobra or upward facing dog. And this time we're gonna come into child's pose. So sh shift your hips back onto your heels and drop your forehead down to your mat. Take a big breath in and out through your nose and then shift forward and let's get that spinal, spinal balance on the other side. So the left leg is gonna go straight back, the right arm is gonna go straight forward, the belly's pulling in and up, and your hips and shoulders are level. Take a big breath in, we're almost done. Hang with me, tuck your elbow to your knee. Inhale, reach forward and back. 
and then reaching back, try to touch your foot with your hand. Let's do it again. Inhale, forward and back. Exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, forward and back. And exhale, just reach back and see if you can find your foot in space. Touch, and one more time. Inhale, forward and back. Exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, forward and back. And this time, yes, go ahead and find your foot. Grab onto it if you can. Kick your toes up to the sky. Get that great stretch through the left hip flexor and the right shoulder. The more you kick your toes to the sky, the more the feel your stretch. Take one more breath, working your core and your balance at the same time as you're being flexible. So that is the flexible warrior for sure. Go ahead and release out of that and let's get that runner's lunge. So the left foot's gonna step up and in between the hands, make sure that knee is spread right out over the ankle. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, you're gonna go ahead and straighten your left leg. And again, if you need to keep a bend in the knee, all good. The more that you can straighten the leg and lift up with the tailbone, soften your elbows, relax your shoulders, and bring your chin to your chest. Let's take three more nice deep breaths here, enjoying your runner's lunge. So listening to your body, sending that message of peace and calm and acceptance and gratitude. You know, if you are an athlete and a runner, make sure that you're carving out that time for gratitude for your feet and your legs and your family members and everything that supports you on your journey. Go ahead and shift your weight forward. Awesome job. We are gonna come into that three-legged downward dog. So you're gonna curl your right toes under, squeeze your right knee straight. Again, when you pick this, when you take this foot up to the sky, try not to drag it on the floor. Use your core strength to pick that foot up without dragging it and send it up to the sky. You can bend that knee and kick your hip open, which I think feels so good. And then the left knee comes to the left wrist for your pigeon stretch. Point your right toes, slide it back, open the chest and the heart, take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, release your forearms down. So here's your hip opener here again. And as an option, if you wanted to, you can reach back with your left hand and grab the top of your right foot for your king pigeon variation. That's an option, take it or leave it. If it causes you to cramp or strain or restrict your breathing or struggle, then it's probably too much. It's probably more than you wanna to do today. But you can always work in that direction and maybe with consistency you can get there over time. Wherever you are, one more very deep breath in and then gently release out of it. One more forearm plank, this is our last one. So make sure you take the time to level your shoulders so they're right in line with your elbows. Curl your right toes under, squeeze and step through to your forearm plank. Let's take three very deep breaths, squeeze to the midline, straight line of energy. Make sure you're not dumping in your shoulders or sticking your butt up, but straight line from the crown of the head to the tailbone. And then release the knees down, release the chest down, cobra or upward facing dog. One last time, big breath in, and then use your core to lift your hips up to the sky, downward facing dog for three deep breaths. Inhale through the nose. Get that good stretch of the calves and the ankles. If you wanna do a single leg downward dog, you can always hook your toes behind one ankle. Just make sure you switch and do the same thing on the other side. And then go ahead and release your knees down and cross your legs and have a seat. Good job, you guys. All right, so that was a quick 30 minutes, at least it was for me. I don't know about for you. We're gonna do that side stretch one more time and then we're gonna stick with me because we're gonna to head to the kitchen and we're gonna do a smoothie demo. So for some people, smoothies are old school and you've been doing it for a long time and for others, it's new. So I just wanted to do a quick demo for like one of the very basic, easy go-to smoothies. Right hand onto your mat or whichever side you're starting on, it's all good. Take it over to the side, get that nice side stretch. Think of rolling the chest open, look up, take a big breath in, feels so good, and float it up, and do the same thing on the other side. So take it up and over, big side stretch, and all the way back up, hands at heart center, big breath in, open the chest, gather good positive energy. Again, we want that good, positive, contagious energy, 
and exhale, hands to heart center. And thank you so much for joining me for the 30 minute core and stretch. If you got ahead on your merry way, all good, I totally understand. If you can stick around for a few more minutes, we're gonna head to my kitchen and um, talk a little bit more about the healthy life challenge and do our smoothie demo. So again, it is the um, seven day chill power challenge that starts today. So um, it's seven days of just practicing self-care. If you can get like 30 minutes in, some of you are gonna be doing more than this, 30 minutes in a cardio every day this week, or most days, 10 to 15 minutes of yoga. Again, I'm gonna have a playlist, a YouTube playlist that you'll be able to practice from every day, from your home, you don't have to go anywhere. And then a smoothie every day, ideally, for the whole seven days. That's, and the idea with that is like we're crowding out the junk food. There is so much junk food right now and candy, and um, it's not gonna lessen over the next 60 days. This is the last 60 days of 2020. And so how are you gonna finish out the year? So that's really, um, we wanna finish on that upward spiral so that when we get to January, we're not in the hole, right? That would be the idea. Um, so we wanna be strong and healthy and detox sugar and stress and all of that good stuff. So the Healthy Life Challenge is a handout and a checklist of all these things like cutting back on sugar and artificial sweeteners and additives and preservatives and focusing on adding in fruits and vegetables, and that's why we're one of the reasons why we're doing a smoothie every day. And that's really good for gut health too, by the way, which is good for your immune system. You guys know that 70% or more of your immune system lies in your gut. And one of the best things you can do for gut health is a smoothie a day because it's getting you that fiber and that hydration and um, boosting your gut health. So, okay, let's head to the kitchen. I could talk all day. We're gonna have to do a separate lecture on uh, or talk about um, about gut health, right? So, but meanwhile, these guys, how great are these guys? <laughs> All they need is a fire and a, a little uh, pillow or a, a bed. And here's my girl, Steli. Hi, Steli. Okay, off to the kitchen we go. So I really, like I said, I wanted to be outside today, but you guys, <laughs> I don't know if you're East Coast right now, this is what we have, cold. All I can think of is the song, the, the um, it's not Motley Crue, who is it? Guns and Roses, cold November rain. Okay, here we go, let me try to get you in this other uh, little tripod here. Hopefully you can see me okay, because I am on the taller side, so I might have to adjust accordingly. Okay, so, okay, so I have my blender set up and um, we're gonna talk about just some of the smoothie basics, because again, for some of you, smoothies are newer. And I will tell you, I'm not a big fan of smoothies in the winter time. So right now it's sort of transitioning. And so I am doing, I'm not doing cold smoothies. I don't put anything I see personally. You do you, again, I, I do me, I'm just sharing. So in case it's of interest to you. I do, I don't put any frozen fruits or vegetables in my smoothies in the winter time. Um, what I'm gonna be making today is an apple, kale, and spinach, actually it's a little bit of both because the kale is from my garden, so the tail end of the kale, and spinach I got from the CSA, um, from the farmer's market. And so it's an apple kale ginger smoothie, which ginger is very warming for the gut too, and really good for gut health, and it's just one of those warming herbs. So that's why I love apple kale, uh, apple, kale or spinach and ginger is what we're gonna be making today. So for the basics, um, you need your liquid first. So I um, already put in here just a little bit, and it, it is gelled up. I don't know how much you can see it. It gelled up. I put some chia seeds in with coconut water. I like my chia seeds to gel up because that's really what's good for your digestion and your gut health. Chia seeds are so high in fiber and omega fatty acids, the good um, fatty acids. So. Um, put a little chia seed in with like coconut water and let it sit for like 10 minutes maybe before you do your yoga and then you can blend it in and I like to blend my chia seeds because then they don't get stuck in my teeth so so anyway that was just um, a tablespoon of chia seeds and a little bit like you know maybe a, an eighth of a cup of some coconut water and we're gonna do coconut water and coconut milk so you need your liquid first um, you can use regular dairy milk. I don't. I avoid um, dairy products for the most part. I, I do dairy. I do some cheese and butter and that sort of stuff, but I don't drink milk. So coconut milk or coconut water. Um, you can use 
aloe juice, you could use um, just plain water, um, you could use hemp milk, there's a lot of things that you can use. So, but you need some, some liquid, and I don't measure, you guys, I really don't measure. So about a cup, and you can do a combo of things, you know. Sometimes I make a berry smoothie with pomegranate juice. Um, that's great for the holiday season. Pomegranate juice is really high in antioxidants. Um, so you can figure it out, and there's so many recipes on um, Pinterest, too. And I have a Pinterest page also, Flexible Warrior on Pinterest. I have some folders in there of some of my favorite recipes. So again, about a cup of liquid. You will wing it, do the best you can. And I'm chatting right now, obviously, so this is taking me like five times longer than it normally does. Um, usually you can make a smoothie in like three minutes for sure. Okay, you're gonna take a handful of greens. I'm making a green smoothie today, this is kale. But if you're newer to green smoothies, you probably wanna go more with spinach, okay? So I'm gonna put a little bit of both in. Spinach is um, much milder, so you won't taste it as much as you'll taste the kale. But either way, you don't taste it that much, I, I don't think. So kale, about a cup of um, your greens. I'm gonna just turn that down a little bit. And then we're gonna put an apple in. So obviously you wanna wash your apple first. Um, you could actually put the whole apple in, but it's better if you core it. Um, so you cut your apple up. I just didn't wanna do this in advance because I didn't want my apple to get browned. <laughs> so put your apple in. Again, the reason I like to use apples is because I don't, I don't like to put um, frozen fruit in, in when it's cold out. So that's just me, but you could use banana, frozen banana or fresh banana, um, berries. Um, you could use mango and pineapple. Obviously those are a little bit higher in sugar. So if you're trying to reduce your sugar intake, an apple, a green apple um, or berries are the better low sugar. And again, you know, with your greens, you could use collard greens, you could use lettuce, um, you could use parsley even. There's all sorts of things that you can put in your smoothies. All right, so that's that. Um, the next thing we wanna add is some protein and fat. Protein and fat are really important ingredients too. So um, I use plant-based protein. These are the two that I use and I'll put the link in the comments of this video for um, this aqua sprouts and for my superfood shop that's on my Amazon shop. So if you're having a hard time finding a good plant paste, I really like this earth chimp, okay, because it's got probiotics in it. It's made in small batches. It's vegan and I typically get vanilla, although um, the chocolate is really good too. And then this Aqua Sprout blend, I love this because literally, you guys, this is the only protein powder I've ever found that is one single ingredient, and that is water lentils. So this is a green powder, and this is really kind of more for people who are more experienced smoothie makers, because it's green, right? So I'm gonna do actually half and half today. I don't know, because I'm winging it, that's why. So I'm gonna do half of the um, Aqua Sprout, and you can add, um, by the way, because like gr the green powder and the protein powder is a great combo. But this is another green powder that I really love too, that I add to smoothie sometimes, the Tonic Alchemy. Um, this has 91 superfoods in it. Um, seaweeds, probiotics, tonic herbs, um, fruits and vegetables. So, oh my gosh. Let's just add a little bit. Of, I'm not going to add a whole scoop of this, but I'm going to add a little bit of this because I, I um, want to boost my immune system. And I did have a good amount of candy yesterday. <laughs> so I'm trying to, what we say is we're crowding out, crowding out. So I'm not a diet person. I don't like to follow any specific diet, um, although I am mostly plant-based. Um, I don't count calories. I don't like to focus on restriction at all. Um, but the theory of the dietary theory, like crowding out, the more that you put this stuff in and just fill it for all these nutrient dense foods, your body is going to be so full from nutrition that you're not going to crave the junk food. Like that's the idea. So we don't have to necessarily focus on restriction and dieting. We can just focus on fueling our bodies really healthy and good and just flip everything on the, instead of like over exercising and restriction, we're focusing on self care and fueling our bodies really well, if that makes sense. Okay, there's a lot in here already. Again, I already had chia seeds in here, but you could do flax seed also, um, very good for fiber. I pretty much, whatever, whatever smoothie I'm doing, add flax or chia, pretty much always. Um, you can also add extra superfoods in it, like cacao nibs, really high in magnesium. It's one of my favorites. 
adds a little crunch to it. Hemp seeds are also really high in protein and um, good omega fatty acids. So I love those as well. Or you can sprinkle those on top, which are really nice. Maybe we'll try to do that. And then the last thing I'm going to do, and you can add fresh ginger if you have it, or powder, ginger powder, although it's a little bit chalk, chalky for me. Or if you have therapeutic grade um, ginger essential oil, I always keep this on hand. I have all my essential oils here, my handy ones, not all of them, but um, the ones that I use a lot for cooking are right here at the ready at my countertop. I use this ginger all the time because it is really um, just warming and I love the flavor. I'm a ginger girl for sure. So I would add like three or four or more drops <laughs> of ginger. Mm, and it just smells so good and it tastes delicious. Okay, so let's blend it up. So that's pretty much everything. Did I say about the healthy fat? I think I did, but if I didn't, I will backtrack. Um, hold on one second, I'll be right back. <laughs> I just have to get my... So if you have a Vitamixer, um, because the apple's in a big chunk, it kinda needs to be pushed down in there. Blend it up. Yeah, that is like super thick because of all the chia seeds and the apple <laughs> is super thick. So I'm going to add more coconut water. And you know coconut water is like your natural Gatorade, all right? Very high in electrolytes, so no coloring, no additive preservatives and all of those things, just coconut water. So good for you. Now, yes, is it higher in sugar? Yeah, it is, but it's not any higher in sugar than Gatorade, that's for sure. Okay, let's blend this up one more time. The kids love it too, by the way. That is definitely better. Um, like I said, I'm a wing it, wing it smoothie maker. Oh my gosh, this is really green. I should have made a purple one. Darn it, I didn't even think of that. To match my shirt and my favorite team. Okay, so here it is. Again, it's pretty thick because um, I had those chia seeds in it and I put over a cup of um, uh, uh, kale and spinach. So let's taste it. It's a little thick for me. I'm gonna re-blend it after we're done chatting and add probably a little bit more like coconut water um, or coconut milk if you don't want it to be sweeter. So that's your kale, ginger, apple smoothie, okay? Um, and that's really, I, what I really wanna encourage you all to do is contemplate again the, the last 60 days of the year. So <clears throat> how are you gonna finish this year? It's been a bumpy year and you know it's going to be the new year before we know it and so this is an opportunity that we have right now and i really believe so strongly that no matter what's going on no matter who wins the election or who you're voting for or who or whatever it's it really matters and what i really want people to contemplate and work on is their own self-care because we are responsible for our own health and wellness beyond anything else right so um so practice your own self-care and you know, reduce stress and reduce your sugar intake and get outside and get your exercise and your cardio and be part of the Chill Power Challenge. I'd love to have you in the challenge if you're not already in it. You will get this handout that's already um, in, the, in the handouts um, on the Chill Power Challenge Facebook group or if you're subscribing to my e-newsletter, it's there as well. Um, you should have gotten it yesterday. And also you guys, take a hot bath like today or sometime this week. The little things really matter. Get good quality sleep, your hydration, and you know those little extra little self-care things like taking your dog for a walk or whatever brings you a sense of peace and joy. So that's it for now. Let me know if you have any questions, you guys. I'm gonna re-blend this in a second, make it a little bit, um, blend it up a little bit more to break up the kale and the um, spinach and make it a little bit lighter. But again, um, just experiment with your smoothies and you know, if you make it and it's a little this or a little that, you can always tweak it, right? There's no big deal. Um, all right, 
Hopefully I'll see you in the challenge. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Please subscribe to my channel, like it, share it out to your Pinterest or your Instagram or your Facebook pages. I'm always so grateful for that. And I really look forward to seeing you in the challenge. The light within me honors and acknowledges the same light that is within each of you. Be part of the positive contagious ripple effect and namaste. Stay flexible warriors. Bye.